Hi, Romans here and welcome to another music review. I review every album from a viewpoint of a musician, as I am a singer, songwriter and a bass player for my own group Jacobe. And last year we have released our debut album called Pursuits in Life. What makes it unique is that it's a pretty heavy prog rock without guitars. Instead you have drums, bass, saxophone and keyboards. You can check out two of our music videos on my YouTube channel. We're building our own monument and fake the new kind of beauty. And also a studio live take of A Way to a Pose. description of all these videos you will find all the information about where is the record available. It's available on all digital platforms like Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, iTunes, Amazon, Bandcamp, but also in this digipack version of a CD with a very beautifully illustrated 20 pages long booklet. So in case you want one, all you need to do is contact me via an email, on Facebook, on Instagram, or you can get one through Bandcamp. And today I'm going to review the new album from Flying Colors, Third Degree. Music review. Music review. Flying Colors is one of the projects of Mike Portnoy, and this is one of those proc supergroups, which seems to be quite a thing in the last couple of years. And apart from Mike Portnoy, formerly known from Dream Theater, we've got Steve Morse, who's been the lead guitar player in Deep Purple for the past 20 years, and we've got, for example, Neil Morse. So uh, there's quite some serious talent behind this band. This is their third album. I remember listening to their debut album when it came out, but it's been such a long time ago that I don't really remember that anymore. So I've heard a new album almost five times. I've been at my fifth listening just now, haven't finished it. So let's start with the review. I really dig the first two tracks on the album that are on the heavier side. The first track, The Lost Inside, has this great modern riff groovier verses. It's a really hard-hitting song and it has a great chorus that kind of makes you wait for it, but it's well worth the wait. Also, there's a 70s Hammond solo, which is something I probably wouldn't have expected in such a modern sounding track and it just adds to the overall color of the track. The second track, More, is probably my favorite track on the album. It has this sabotage-like riff and then in the verses it kind of reminds me of Muse. It's a very good heavy proc song and especially I love that core where the whole band screams More in a chorus. It's such a simple yet memorable moment. Another track that I really love on the album is called Gero Nemo, if I pronounce it right. It has a very funky bass at the beginning. It's a very groovy track and I love that contrast between those laid-back and low-key verses. And that almost festive chorus. I like those chorus. This is a song that I think will be very good live. You Are Not Alone, another one of the songs that they shot the music video for, is an emotional ballad with a bit of a blues and orchestral arrangements thrown in. It's a bit cliche in terms of the execution and in terms of the delivery, but not in a bad way. The rest of the album pretty much follows in a neo-proc way and if you watch my reviews you probably know that I'm not a big fan of neo-proc but I do like certain songs nevertheless so for example Cadence is like a symphonic neo-proc song where I really like the chorus And 
And for example, Guardian is like an art rock song with that British vibe and the chorus sounds like the Beatles meet Yes, both of which are very uplifting bands. And there's also a great bass solo here. Love Letter is a very happy sounding song. When my wife was listening to this record with me, she told me that it kind of sounds like it was a Christmas song. This is not one of the tracks I'm a big fan of. And then we have two long songs on the album. So the first one is called Last Train Home, which is over 10 minutes long. This is still a pretty straightforward neo prog song, but in terms of the emotional spectrum, it seems to be very nostalgic, at least that's how I felt about it. The acoustic part somewhere in the middle is very nice and this is kind of a slow burner so I think it will take more time for me to really appreciate this song. The final track Crowell is over 11 minutes long and this is slightly more serious prog tune with some poppy elements. Also I totally love the album cover that brings some of the artwork behind Pink Floyd Records to mind. I do think that album is a bit too long though at the running time of over 66 minutes, I think it would strongly benefit from a shorter running time. The problem with most of these prog supergroups is that despite the undeniable talent, musical talent behind those records, it seems that there's no passion and sometimes there's simply not good material to work with. Uh, for example, I remember listening to Sounds of Apollo, another side project of Mike Portnoy, or one of a very few prog supergroups without Mike Portnoy, The Sea Within, which I made a review for last year. Both of these records had some of the best musicians on the planet behind them, but I don't really remember those records anymore. I don't remember the music on them, despite the fact that I've been listening to it quite a lot. And honestly, I'm not planning on returning to it. The good thing about this album is that there are some pretty memorable moments that you will look forward to every time you get back to the record because I'm pretty sure that this is a record you need to listen to a lot in order to appreciate. I know that some of you may say well hearing the album for almost five times that's not enough for progressive album. You're right but I have to make this review while the record is relevant. That means that my reviews are slightly more of a first impression kind of thing but I mean those first couple of listenings are very crucial in deciding whether you want to keep coming back to the record or not and quite honestly I want to keep coming back to it. My first couple of listenings were a bit mixed. I really liked the first two tracks, wasn't that in tune with the rest of the album but it's actually growing on me so uh, maybe this is how you will feel too. Have you heard this album already? You can let me know in the comment section below whether you agreed or disagreed with me, how much do you like this album and how well do you think it compares to the other Flying Colors record, maybe even how well does it compare to the other Mike Portnoy's side projects. You can follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, you can find links to both in the description of this video below. If you like this review, don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe. You can check out my own original music, my live performances, my worst to best series and quite a lot of other reviews as well. Thanks a lot for watching.